Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about linear functions. To get some main concepts down, linear functions and graphs are functions that look something like this. They're going to be straight lines that point up, down, or are horizontal or flat. But the question is, how do we classify these mathematically? Remember that when you graph a function, you have your x-axis, which represents your input, then you have your y-axis, which will represent your respective outputs. So linear functions really just have the goal of classifying different rates of growth, decline, or steadiness. So such functions actually do have major application in a lot of areas. But anyway, I digress. To start classifying lines, we realize that lines have two main parts. The first part is called the slope. And the slope is going to be the steepness of a graph, which will be accompanied by a numeric value. Conventionally, we read graphs from left to right. This convention will help us classify what slopes look like. Starting with the blue graph on the left, if we read from left to right, we notice that the line points upward. In this case, we would say that this graph has a positive slope. For the orange graph in the middle, when we read from left to right, we notice the line goes downward. So we would say that this has a negative slope. So once we start assigning these slopes numbers, we notice that the blue graph on the left will have a positive number slope, and the orange graph in the middle will have a negative number slope. Basically, the larger that numeric value is, the steeper the slope will look on the graph. Now in the final graph, we notice that this graph doesn't go up or down, so we would say that this has a slope of zero, also called a constant function. The way that constant functions read is you'll typically have f of x equals to a number, or y equals to just a number, but no variables will be in play. So now that we talked about slope, we need to talk about the second part of classifying lines. The second major part of a line is the y-intercept. So it's not enough to know how steep the line is, we also need to know where it crosses the y-axis. This information will be encoded by a point on the graph, where your x-coordinate is 0 and your y-coordinate is just whatever the corresponding number is. That's it for the main concept in terms of the picture, so let's start to be a little bit more precise mathematically. We essentially have three ways to describe a line. The first one is called standard form, where a line looks like ax plus by is equal to c, where a, b, and c are just some real numbers, because the functions that we'll be talking about in this slide are real functions completely. The thing about standard form is it's very cut and dry, so you can't necessarily look at standard form notation and read off information about your linear function from the get-go. Which is kind of disappointing because I just said that the two characteristics of a line that we need are its slope and its y-intercept. So let's fix that. Starting from a standard form of line, we can actually solve for y in this equation, and this will get us something called slope-intercept form, which looks like y equals mx plus b. Now this is a much better way of writing a line because we can look at it and start reading off the information. The coefficient of our variable x, denoted by m, will be the slope of our line. Now m will be this numeric value that I was talking about that represents our slope. It'll be a positive number, a negative number, or it'll just be zero, in which case we would get y equals b. And the b that is present here denotes our y-intercept. So we can take this number as it is and plug it into the ordered pair zero b, and that'll exactly denote where this line crosses the y-axis. So whenever given a line in standard form, solve for y to get it in slope-intercept form, then you can start reading off the information more efficiently and more accurately. So just to reiterate, if m is a positive number, then you're going to have positive slope, and if m is a negative number, then you're going to have negative slope. So the thing about forms 1 and 2 is that these are good for describing lines. And also note that we might have something in the form of f of x equals mx plus b. It doesn't always have to be the letter y, because sometimes we're talking about a linear function, not just a linear graph. But f of x equals mx plus b means the same thing as y equals mx plus b. It's all just a matter of notation. So the idea is that we would be able to be given a line in the form 1 or 2 and then read off information from that. However, there are situations where we might have to build lines from scratch. If we're building a line, we need two pieces of information. We need its slope, and we just need a point on the xy plane that the graph goes through. Once we have that information, we can plug that into something called point slope form, which looks like y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Here, m still denotes your slope, but the point x1, y1 will be just some point that our line has to go through. So like I said, point slope form is good for building lines, where standard form and slope intercept form are good for reading off information about lines. Let's go ahead and jump into some problems. 
For our first example, we're going to graph the line in standard form negative 4x plus 2y equals to 4. Now like I said, the first thing to do here is to solve for y and to get it in point slope form. If we do that, we get that y is equal to 2x plus 2. xy charts are good for graphing, so I'm going to try to get the points at x equals negative 1, x equals 0, and x equals 1, and then I'll just play a game of connect the dots. Choosing x equals 0 as a point to evaluate our function at is good because it'll tell us our y-intercept. As I evaluate our functions at these points, I'll get that evaluation at negative 1 gives me 0, evaluation at 0 gives me 2, and evaluation of 1 gives me 4. So reading off the points that this chart tells me, I have the point negative 1, 0, 0, 2, and 1, 4. And once I graph those, all I have to do is draw a line in between all of them that connects them, and then you're done. So there you have it. This is what the graph of y equals 2x plus 2 looks like. We have a slope of positive 2, so our graph goes upward, and we have a y-intercept of positive 2, so I'm crossing the y-axis at the point positive 2. And that's all there is to it. For our next example, we're going to build a line. We're going to find a line that passes through the points negative 2, 1, and 1, negative 2. So like I said before, we need two pieces of information when we're building a line. We need a slope, and we need a point it goes through. But here we have two points, so the question is what do we do? Well there's actually a known way of finding the slope that exists between two points on the xy chart. It's called the slope formula, and it looks like y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The y1, y2, x1, x2 come from labeling the points that we've been given. It doesn't matter how we label these as long as we're consistent throughout our whole process. So I'm going to call the point negative 2, 1, x1, y1, and I'm going to call the point 1, negative 2, x2, y2. Now that I've chosen a labeling, I can go ahead and start plugging this information into my formula. Once I go through the operations and simplify, I get an answer of negative 1, which I'll denote by m, because that is the slope between negative 2, 1 and 1, negative 2. So this is good. I have a slope to work with, and I have two points that my line passes through. So I just pick any of these points that I want, and I'm going to choose negative 1, 2 to put into our point slope form. When we're done with this, as an exercise, try plugging in the point 1, negative 2 to see that you'll get the same line. As I input my information, I get y minus positive 1 equals negative 1 times the quantity x minus negative 2. All that's left to do here is simplify to solve for y, which gives me a line of y equals negative x minus 1. And I'll say again, plug in the point 1, negative 2 into point slope form with the slope negative 1 to see that you will get the same line. But overall, that's the basic recipe for building a line that goes through two points. You first find the slope between those two points by use of the slope formula, and then you plug that information into the point slope form by choosing one of the points that you've been given. For our second to last example, we'll talk about parallel versus perpendicular lines. So in this setup, I'm going to be given y equals mx plus b. Any line with the slope m is said to be parallel to y equals mx plus b and any line with the slope minus 1 over m is said to be perpendicular to y equals mx plus b. And I'm talking about parallel and perpendicular in the geometric sense. And just as a shorthand, I'll use vertical bars to denote parallel and a vertical and horizontal crossing bar to denote perpendicular. These notations are fairly common. So for an example, start with y equals 2x minus 3, which I'll go ahead and graph right here. The first thing we'll do is we'll find a line that is parallel to y equals 2x minus 3 with the y-intercept of 0, 1. So parallel to y equals 2x minus 3 means I need to have the exact same slope. So in our case, we just read off the original slope, which is positive 2. Remember that I need the y-intercept of the new line. And the y-intercept for the new line that we're building has already been given. It's 0, positive 1. So I'll just add positive 1 to y equals 2x to get my line. When I graph it, I get this picture, which makes sense because the line that I just built should be parallel to y equals 2x minus 3, and it is. For our next example, we're going to find the line that is perpendicular to y equals 2x minus 3 that passes through the point 1, 2. Now this will be a little bit more work because we're not given the y-intercept exactly, so what we need to do to build this line is to figure out what its slope is and to figure out a point that it passes through and we're given a point that it passes through, it's 1, 2, which means that we'll end up using the point slope form. Using the instructions at the top of the slide, since our slope is 2, the perpendicular slope should be negative 1 over 2, 
based on this formula. And now since I have a point that this line should pass through, I can go ahead and encode my point slope form with this information. So I get y minus 2 is equal to negative 1 half times the quantity x minus 1. And just like last time, we will simplify and solve for y. In so doing, we get a final answer of y equals to negative 1 half x plus 5 halves, which when I draw, looks like this. Which again, agrees with our concept of perpendicular. This line exactly is perpendicular to the original white line, y equals 2x minus 3, so I found exactly what I was looking for. So whenever asked to find parallel or perpendicular lines, you'll be given a line to start with, and then you need to determine what your slope is going to be. Remember, parallel means the same slope, perpendicular means minus 1 over the original slope, and then you just have to figure out what point it goes through, which will probably be given in the problem. For our last example, we're going to do a word problem. Suppose that a home security system company charges $500 for hardware and initial installation, and then plus a $25 charge every month for the professional monitoring. If I bought this system two years ago and have been using it ever since, how much would I have spent on it at this point? The idea with this problem is that we have to build a linear function from scratch, and then we have to evaluate that function at a particular number. So let's talk about the information that we know so far. We're given a base charge of $500 for the installation and the hardware, and then we're given a $25 a month charge for every month that we have the system in use. So we're going to let c of x denote our cost function, so to speak, and then we're going to let x represent the number of months that we've had the system. And we're choosing x because we have a time interval that seems like a variable here, because our cost, total cost rather, of the entire system and its use has to do with the number of months that we've been using it, plus the initial charge. So to represent the initial cost, I'm going to start by letting c of x equal to 500, because the number 500 is independent of the number of months that we've had the system. This is just the initial cost that we get when we first install the system, but then we need to add on a $25 per month charge, which will look like c of x equals to 500 plus 25x. So this is different from the point slope form that we've been talking about because we don't have points of data to work with. All we have is how our function grows and how much we cost initially. Word problems like this in a college algebra class are very common because you have an initial charge and you have a growth rate. In our case, that's $25 per month, so 25x makes sense. Now at this point, we can go ahead and figure out how much it cost to have bought the system for two years. Since two years is equal to 24 months, we need that conversion because this cost function is in terms of months. We simply evaluate our cost function at 24 months. Plugging this information in gives us a final answer of 1100. So after two years of use, I have spent $1100 on the security system.